The news that Pump Sweet to 2X here recently is the same news that XRP holders got. But did the SEC's notice of appeal stop that dead in its tracks? We're going to talk about it. Along with Charles getting mad that others are getting love. But Charles, your coin sucks, my guy. And VC money is starting to pour into crypto because rates are going down and we've got 12 to 18 more months of more going down. Oh, that actually sounds really good, doesn't it? Due to the graphic nature of this program, listener discretion is advised. Oh baby, baby, it's time to play and I love when VC money enters the market. But before that, your comments. Hot, spicy, naughty, maybe I'll share it in the beginning of the next one. Trucker Trash dropping some support on the channel. Thank you much, sir. Says, hope this helps with the cleanup, brother. Thanks for all you do and have a great day. Yeah, the cleanup is still going on. They still do not have power, yet survey and cleanup crews are happening now so might get power in like 72 hours it is still an absolute mess out this way a few comments which get the vibe the unholy pasol says is your intro sampled from edge crusher by fear factory well i don't know we're gonna have to stick around and find out cenobite toast crunch says this is precisely why you never marry a coin gordon gecko said it right don't get emotional about stock. Now, mind you, this was in the 80s, and this is before crypto. So if Gordon Gecko was doing a movie now, he would say, don't get emotional about crypto. Johnny Triana, oh, a man who just won my heart over, says, right on, Klaus. Keep the great updates and videos coming just like my girlfriend. Well done. Everyone, let's give this man a golf clap because you know if it's hot, spicy, naughty, irrelevant, I'm going to share it and... Ooh, that was all three. Bitcoin's in at 60,075. Well, ETH is 2406. BNB's at 564. Well, Sol is at 142. By the way, the odds for the Sol ETF have heavily plummeted. In fact, in fact, people now are starting to see more money flow to the side of SWE getting the ETF next, even before Sol. So it goes XRP, SWE, and then Sol. But did the XRP ETF get crushed by Gary G? And you know what Gary's new name is. Gary the Prick. It's a double entendre. It has two meanings. Look up on the screen and look at that. Hwang. Let's get into some news. Crypto VC funding. Yes. Second live bags, 12 million. RG Tex raises 7.8 million. I'm bringing this up because a lot of this money is sitting on the sidelines from venture capital. It's just, it's just too expensive right now. Rates are just too high and you're paying a lot of juice on risky stuff. Now listen to this stat. And this is just a trickle. This is just a tip. So like Johnny Triana was talking about making his chick, you know, finish all the time. We're just giving you the tip now. I'm going to give you more later, okay? While the amount of disclosed venture rounds this week was comparatively less than was announced in recent weeks, crypto venture capital activity for the year is on pace to dethrone 2023's total of $2.6 billion. Listen to this stat. Some 2.2 billion has already been raised as of July 30th. Yeah, so we're on pace to be 2023. So you're having more money flowing to crypto and you're like, what, bro, how big is VC money? Listen to this stat. The amount raised across 24 funds is still far behind 2022's total of 22.7 billion. So as rates come down, VC is going to jump in. And there's a little lag effect, okay? So what happens is these VC players get this money, and they don't spend it all right away, okay? They look for the right ops, for the right juicy times to make some money, right? So $22.7 billion, and right now we're sitting at 2.6. So as rate come down, and we get a little bit more favorable market conditions, oh my, I might be reporting stories on even more VC funding, and wouldn't that be hot AF? Fed rate cut, dividend ETFs, and crypto see massive inflows. More good news from the Klaus Meister today. And by the way, I just got done running four hours of hills. Yeah, I've got a race in four weeks. It's a 100K mountain race, and I'm training for it. I'm way behind because I've been working on cleanup and all this other stuff. But I did a four-hour run today. It was a lot of fun. The Federal Reserve's recent interest rate cut, and we're going to see 12 to 18 months more, ignited a rally in both the stock and crypto markets. U.S. dividend ETFs saw a surge in inflows, attracting $3 billion in September. The influx of capital into dividend ETFs also marks a significant jump with the monthly inflow of $424 million. The surge in mainstream ETF inflows coincides with the bullish sentiment in the crypto market following the Fed's rate cuts. Crypto is risky. If any of you puts in the comments 
that crypto is not risky, I will find you. I will find you. I've got legs and I can run. I can cover the distance. It might take me some time, but I will run and I will track you down. Crypto is super risky. So as rates come down, you could play in the risky pool. Yeah. Yeah, seriously, think about that. That's why this venture capital funding story came first, just like the ladies. Because VC money is sitting on the sidelines waiting for it to get cheaper. And now that it's getting cheaper, they're starting to dip their toes in the water. Now, you guys know, all right, Cardano, a little bit of Charles Hodgkinson, a little bit of Soul Talk. Let's talk about this and then we're going to get into some XRP face melting. Going to love it. Solana's 40,000 transactions per second exposes Cardano's outdated claims. Because remember how uh, Cardano, and specifically Charles Hoskinson, is always like, oh, Cardano is number one. Cardano is the best. Cardano is going to dethrone everything. Cardano is the ETH killer. Meanwhile, Cardano is sitting at, hold on, I didn't even do it in the intro because they suck in balls price-wise. Cardano, 35 cents. Charles, you're a fucking loser. But he's always trying to like piss on other people. And that's one of the reasons why I don't like him is because as a crypto leader, he should be a little bit more positive. Solana's transactions per second have surged to 40,000 with the main net beta launch of Frankendance, her new validator client. This surge has ignited comparisons for Cardano, whose TPS currently sits at 1.3. 1.3 versus 40,000. So Charles, your 1.3 is good because ain't no one fucking using Cardano. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. Do you really need 40,000 transactions per second on Solana? Ain't no fucking 40,000 transactions ever happening per second on Solana. No one's using this shit that much. So just kind of keep that in mind. I'm bringing this up, though, because you're going to see all of these chains trying to improve, and they're all doing the same thing. They all want smart contracts. They all want tokenization. They all want high TPS. I think Stellar had one called, like, Starlight, I think is what it was. I, I might be messing that up. I think it was Starlight. And it was like 1.2 million transactions per second. In fuck, there's no demand for it. But you still got to build out, right? You got to build the highways out in case there's traffic there so that there's no traffic jams. But everyone's running the same playbook, right? Tokenization, real world assets. We want smart contracts. We want nice transaction flow. It's pretty much all the same. It's like parody. You know when they talk about like parody in the NFL and like all the teams are doing the same thing? It's pretty much what's happening in the crypto world like now. Now, I'm just bringing this story up because I love it. And you guys are going to hear me do one of my favorite quotes. XRP melts like ice under the sun, melting faces. And oh my God, isn't that all you fucking heard from some of these knob gobblers? For real, I'm hanging out on Twitter earlier. And like my block and mute button has got to be like worn out by now. Because all I'm seeing is, oh, the appeal doesn't change anything about XP. The fucking appeal definitely changes everything because now you got a couple more years of bullshit going on. And the worst part about it is we still don't know what they're officially appealing at. They can be appealing XRP being a security. Yes, they can. Oh, yes, they can. So my Canadian friends out there that commented down below that said, oh, this has nothing to do with XRP as a security. You have no fucking clue. No one has a fucking clue because guess what? They haven't filled out Form C yet and submitted it saying specifically what they're appealing. If they appeal XRP as a security on secondary markets, XRP is going to crash. If they go after Brad and Chris personally, oh man, that means they piss someone off near the top. If they go after programmatic sales, oh shit. If they go after more of a penalty, oh crap, not Good. It's going to drag it out for some long time. Now, now I'm going to bring something up and then we're going to talk about ETFs, okay? Who wins when a court case gets dragged out? I'll give you a couple seconds here to put your answer down below. Again, who wins when a court case is dragged out? And hold on, hold on. This is for all the fans out there. The nature of this program, listener discretion is advised. <laughs> and yes, it was the intro to Edge Crusher. But the winners are the lawyers. Think about that. Lawyers got to get paid, right? And so if this drags out for years and years and years, the lawyers get to line their pocketos, don't they? Yes, they do. It's good job security for lawyers. The problem we got is Ripple has spent well over $150 million defending this. You might as well double, if not triple, that price tag. That money, that time, that effort could have been developing stuff that could use XRP. 
That money could be going to paying more staff to get RLUSD launch going on faster. I want you to think about that. Not every company has unlimited budgets. In fact, no companies have unlimited budgets. It's only our freaking governments that try to screw us over with debt. So that 150, which easily can turn into 300 million, could have gone to other things to help out the XRP, XRPL ecosystem. But instead, it goes to lawyer fees. So again, the lawyers win. XRP ETFs hope after the SEC appeal depend on U.S. election. I have to agree with this because I, I could easily see if we get a dramatic shift in what happens voting wise, you're going to have a very different sentiment. All right. And that sentiment is going to be echoed in different parts of the government. Okay. So what happens here? And for those of you that do not live in the United States, and for those of you that do live in the United States and simply don't give a shit about U.S. politics, let me go over this real quick. When a new president comes in, they put their own people in, right? They pick their cabinet, they pick their heads of departments, all that kind of stuff, okay? They put their peeps in. Trump, you know, is not going to put Gary the Prick in or let Gary the Prick stay in there. Hell no, he's gone, gone, gone. So it is about the change in the politics. It's about the change at the top. So if we do get Cam Kim in, they're going to have the same approach. It might not be Gary Gensler because Gary Gensler might get promoted, but she'll put someone in that's going to have a similar thing to Gary. Because Cam Cam, remember, has been VP for three and a half years. And has she really been pro-crypto? Hell no. But I bet you there's influencers out there trying to tell you that Cam Cam's been pro-crypto. The application chances of success were considered higher than for other cryptocurrencies such as Solana, especially after Torres ruled last year that XP was not a security. Still, the market was dampened in the excitement on October 7th when the SEC filed for notice to appeal. What bothers me about this is think of the timeline. Index fund manager Bitwise applied to incorporate the Bitwise XRP ETF in Delaware on September 30th, then filed the application on the 2nd, shortly after the SEP was like, yo, cock block. You're sitting there, you're trying to play the moves on this chicken. Maybe she's had a couple drinks. Maybe you've had a couple drinks, so you're, you know, your inhibitions are a little bit down. Then all of a sudden you're flirting with her and it's going good and, you know, maybe a little touching and whatnot. Then her friend comes up and she's like, Karen, we need to go. And then she grabs her friend, cock block. That's what the SEC did right there. So right now, the election is becoming more and more pivotal to the success of crypto. If Kamala wins, you're basically going to have four more years of the Biden regime. Has the Biden regime and the Democrats been pro-crypto? No. No. What about what about Senator Warren? Pocahontas? Has she been pro-crypto? No. No. What about all our friends, right? Maxine Waters. What about the Shermanator? Are they pro-crypto? No. And they've been protected by the presidency. So Kamala gets elected, they're going to be even more protected. So the hopes for the XRP ETF are big. Now, the reason I bring up the hopes for the XRP ETF has to do with SWE, okay? SWE was floating around a dollar for like the longest time. And then all of a sudden what happened was, was they got some news regarding a little bit of ETF action, okay? And what happened was, was once they got the news of that, the price really started moving. We went from right around a dollar to almost a $2, two Xing money on the launch of the trust. And what they do is they take that trust and then convert it into an ETF. XRP has the same type of thing. They've got a trust with Grayscale, just like SWE does. Yeah, there's big money involved here. So this is one of the stories that I'm very hopeful for, and it has to do with the ETFs, but it also has to do with the presidency. Now, I want to share something with you super fast, okay? I wanted to share a little bit of chartage action for you. And the one I wanted to show you is this whole stablecoin one. The stablecoin market cap right now is sitting at its highest it's ever been. So as the crypto market itself struggles a little bit here, okay, we've seen that in the old heat maps. Some things are doing pretty good. The stablecoin market cap is freaking roaring. Ripple's launching RLUSD. MICA is going to be kicking out Tether in Europe 2024 by the end of the year, which people that want to do business with stable coins are going to have to make some choices. One of those choices could be RLUSD if they get it done in time. But I wanted to show you that even though we've had some rough times in the crypto market, look at the stablecoin market cap, the highest it's ever been. 
there's some definite players that are going to get involved with this when it launches. Unfortunately, though, it is only for institutional investors at the time. Now, XRP price... Hey, is the worst over? I mean, I think we got to think about that, right? In the last 24 hours, we bounced up from 52.8, which is good, right? That's good. Is it low enough for you to buy to be excited? Mm, probably not. I, I think a lot of people watching this channel love XRP sub 50 cents. So 52 cents, we're kind of in the gray zone where we're kind of like, yeah, this is kind of cool, but it's not cool enough for me to put more money in. But that's good, though, because we're not completely falling on our faces. But what could push us to our faces and create melting faces, not the good ones. I'm talking about the ones where you're, like, right in front of the sun. And you melt like the guy in Indiana Jones in the Temple of Doom. I think it was the Temple of Doom. No, Raiders of the Lost. No. What was the one with his dad where the guy drank the wrong cup and he's like, and you chose unwisely or something. And his face melted, right? And his whole body melted. That's the kind of melting we're talking about. If Gary appeals secondary sales... F, man. You're going to be able to buy XRP way lower than 50 cents. So for buying opportunities, okay, you pick your own targets. But what I'm going to tell you right now is, is that we've got several developing news stories that aren't completed yet, which could definitely push XRP down into most of your buy zones. Now, in terms of how are we doing pumping and dumping wise? Well, let's be honest here. I think a lot of us are thinking the same thing. The run-up that happened on the 28th, which then crashed with a little bit of Middle East action and then with the SEC action. Were players on the inside ahead and know about this? Like, did they pump it up knowing that there was going to be an SEC appeal coming in? Because i got to be honest with you. Most of these government agencies don't do a good job keeping stuff quiet. They, they really don't. There's always leaks with stuff, right? So my fear is that there is some inside shenanigans going on and that they're playing the market for fools, right? Pumping it up before exit liquidity action and then boom sec pissing in our cheerios and before someone says but bro cheerios aren't good cereal yeah they are cheerios are really good like they taste really good. i like lucky charms though i gotta be honest with you i like lucky charms and i really like captain crunch the only problem with captain crunch is it always cuts the roof of your mouth so you gotta let it sit in the bowl for a while you gotta let it get soggy and then you gotta eat it that's how you tackle captain crunch okay cereal tips from klaus so it's not just crypto tips it's cereal tips the thing though I noticed, and I want to show this before I get into the final segment, is I zoomed out so you could see the initial Torres ruling in 2023. Look at the pump there. Look at the BTC ETF news, blah, blah, blah. Now look at the other Torres ruling right here. You notice how they've been less and less and less? Yeah, that's not a good sign at all. Like, it's really not. You're seeing a lot of pressure on the ceiling with these pumps. And the hard part is you're also noticing that these pumps just aren't lasting. So, several market dynamics are playing into XRP's favor right now. Anyone that says XRP is going to be melting faces is freaking on crack. Anyone that says XRP is going to go to the moon, dude, we got to clear a whole bunch of problems first before you even think of the moon, we got to worry about breaking a dollar because homegirl, we have not been in a dollar for a long, long time. How long, Klaus? I don't know, since December of 2021. Oh, is this one disgusting? Oh, I mixed lemon lime with fruit punch and it's really salty because it's my electrolyte drink because I just finished working out. Oh, this is absolutely disgusting. Seriously gross. But there are a lot of market dynamics that are going on. And I read a comment before I did this video, and it was like, Klaus flip-flops with every video. He said, sometimes stuff is good, sometimes stuff is bad. Yeah, because life isn't always good. Life isn't always bad. Life is dynamic. Eight days ago, where I'm living right now was awesome. Perfectly clean, people were happy, having a lot of fun, and now it looks like a freaking disaster zone out there. Things change. So a week ago, nine days ago, if you would have been like, Hey, Klaus, can you think of a cool place for us to visit? I would have told you to visit some of the places in my neighborhood because it's beautiful out here. I wouldn't tell you that today, though, would I? See, news changes, and news is very dynamic. And right now, you've got Middle East tension. You've got SEC. You've got rate cuts. You've got the election. You've got Torres action. A whole bunch of things. Some of them are positive and some of them are negative. And a lot of them haven't been decided yet, so we don't know what the full outcome is going to be. 
So yeah, some days I bring you good news. Yeah, some days I bring you bad news. It's not flip-flopping, it's called life. If all you want is the good news, if all you want is, oh my God, we're gonna be melting faces. XRP, when you wake up is $140, then you got the wrong channel. This is a news channel where I bring the news good or bad, happy or sad, so buckle up, kiddos, because these next couple years are gonna be a wild ride with rate cuts in the appeal. Choo-choo, bitches. I gotta stretch and drink this amazing drink. Mmm.